At some point, most photographers develop a craving to see the world from a close-up point of view. Otherwise known as macro photography. Macro photography offers so many possibilities for creative exploration and composition, it can make it really hard to say with a straight face, there was something to shoot today. It really is a completely different world, one where you can get so close to your subject to that reality sort of fades away and a world of geometric elements emerges. In this video, I wanna talk about five reasons why this is the way. One of my biggest points when discussing the use of vintage lenses is the cost. Generally speaking, they're much more affordable than their modern counterparts. And when something costs a lot less, it really makes the jump into it a little easier. Now, how can you possibly know you like something or not if you don't try it? Now, I have three macro lenses, the Super Multicoded Takamar 100mm Macro F4, the 50mm Macro F4, and the Contax Carl Zeiss 60mm Macro F2.8. Now, out of the three, the only true macro lens, as defined by having a minimum magnification ratio of 1 to 1, is the Contax Carl Zeiss 60. My Takamars only have a magnification ratio of 1 to 2, which is fine for some stuff, but if you want to bump that up, you can always purchase macro converters or extension tubes, which are relatively inexpensive. And what should be said that you can also bump up a 1 to 1 macro lens to 2 to 1 or even 4 to 1 with the use of these extension tubes as well to get really close. Now, if you're working on a mirrorless camera, adapting these vintage lenses is super easy. You simply need to know the mount of the lens you're adapting and your camera mount. So these Takamars are M42 mounts. So to mount that to my Sony, I need an M42 to E-mount adapter. For my Contax Carl Zeiss 60, which uses a CY mount, a CY to E-mount adapter is used. Now adapters can cost anywhere between $10 to $25, and once you're adapted, all that's left to do is get out and shoot. Vintage lenses, of course, don't have the ability to autofocus natively with your camera. But unlike regular photography, I think macro photography, along with maybe astro, are where manual focus practices are the best practices, even if you have the option. Now, macro work tends to be at a much slower pace, and with such a tiny focus plane, it's easier to dial in your focus manually versus letting the autofocus try to find that mark. The focus throw on a vintage macro lens are mechanical over the focus by wire system you see on modern ones. So the focus tends to be quite smooth, which is not only a nice experience, but also helps you find that shot that's worthy of a shutter pull. And the manual focusing aids on most modern mirrorless cameras are fantastic and really make it easier to nail your fine focus detail. Focus zooming being my absolute favorite. Now, one thing I'll say with most vintage macros I've used, the barrel will extend out as you approach minimum focusing distance. Just keep that in mind when using them. The biggest impact on optics I've seen between a vintage SLR lens and modern ones is how a lens performs wide open. Modern lenses generally control contrast, chromatic aberrations, and corner to corner sharpness at wider apertures better than vintage lenses. When stopping down, however, the optical performance of the lenses tend to become a little less distinguishable, which means even with an older lens, you can get very similar sharpness results to a lens that costs a lot more while still keeping that subject isolation in check. Now, because of the nature of macro photography, the depth of field is very shallow at close focusing distances, and even at higher apertures like f8 and f11. Now, to maximize this image sharpness, Try keeping the focus plane parallel to the subject whenever possible. Now, one of the best things about vintage macro lenses and macro lenses in general is actually they don't have to be used 
just for macro photography. The close focusing ability gives them that special designation, but because they tend to be on the longer side of the focal range, between 50 and 100 millimeters on a full frame camera, they can actually be used for more general purpose photography and portraiture. It really is hard to get bored with a macro lens, and if you're unsure if it's right for you, an inexpensive vintage macro lens just might be the best way to scratch that itch. Most mirrorless cameras have fantastic in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, so the lack of optical stabilization on these lenses isn't as big a deal as it once was. Now, I would highly recommend using a tripod. While not ideal for everything, it really helps you focus on your composition versus the uh, strength of your core while holding a shot in a highly compromised position, trying to get that focus. You'd be surprised what you can pull out of a backyard session. I really just feel like you can't get bored with a macro lens because there's so much we're not seeing. And shooting with one really transforms any location you're in into sort of an exotic vacation of possibility. I'll leave some cool vintage macro lens options down in the description if anyone is interested in taking a look. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.